welcome back to another Wednesday walking tours. Today we will be walking down the street called McCurcher Drive in Saskatoon and do a little inspection of the pedestrian signal system. So right now I am at Lakeview Park which is the terminating point of the street. It leads to a little strip mall over there and let's do it. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is pause here. So here's a not so fun fact. I went for a bike ride today and right now I'm having to carry it with me throughout this. I We'll be checking out all the pedestrian signals and traffic signals to see if an audible signal is present and and if they do present then are they functioning well which is a part of the walking tour um, lately i am just really interested in traffic signals and especially audible signals which kind of make me having a little obsession with the sounds and with the way they function. I don't know, but I would love to incorporate that as a part of this walking tour. Also another thing about audible signal is that they are a very important part of accessibility and as an accessibility advocate I just can't ignore this. So we're about to hit the first junction. Kircher Drive and Taylor Street. Two material streets meeting each other. Oh, what? Okay, so it, the light here turned green for cars, but stayed red for pedestrians, so I gotta press this button here. 
So let's see if this one works. Okay, we hear the chirps. It does work and the light does turn green. And this one. Also, here's a little disclaimer. Maybe I'll wait for the traffic to be less loud before I say this, but please push button. It's actually a wrong signals. So yeah, this light, it does have audible signal, but it's a very short crossing light as well. And it only triggers if you press the button. Um, I was thinking about like these buttons right here, these instructions, push button for signals. Like so everybody would assume just a little press like this, it will work. Like for example here, a little press. But in reality, for the sounds, you have to hold it like this. I will demonstrate it to you again at this light here. So I'll do it like I do that. Hold it for about two seconds. And you'll see the magic in a little bit. So this one actually now has the light for left turning vehicles first. But it's coming. Yep, you heard the chirping sounds. You have to hold it for the chirping sounds. Or else it's just gonna be a green turn. So there is audible signal and you have to trigger it manually. Okay, next junction please. Okay, so the next signal is of McCurcher and Heritage Drive and Avondale Avenue. It's actually not a traffic signal, it's only a pedestrian signal. So what happens here is that 
it's only triggered if a pedestrian or somebody press on it and the cars have to stop sign so cars still have to follow its own sign and pedestrian got their own sign let's do a press and hold Oh, this one is good. This one even has um, audible instructions. However, the chirp is so short and the light crossing has a countdown starting at 22 seconds. actually pretty good. Audio instructions like that are really helpful. Especially for those who cannot envision which direction that they're crossing and having the street name can help them visualize it wanted to speed up the process a little bit so I decided to bike but it's very hard to hold the camera on one hand and pedal on the other Maybe in the future I should get like a rack or like a gorilla pod to mount my camera into my bike's dash. Don't come for me with this decision it's because I do not have an action camera. So here we are at the next pedestrian crossing, at the next junction. It's also a pedestrian crossing right now, we've got McCurcher Drive and Holland Road. Again, another pedestrian signal. At junctions like this, you cannot cross the street from this side, you must cross here at the light.
Maybe this one. It looks different. It doesn't have a speaker, so but I'm gonna do it anyways. Press and hold. Release. Let's see. Nothing happens. Okay, this one doesn't have audible signal. Fantastic. Probably this one is an older one, so they didn't have it. And again, very long countdown, starting at 20 seconds. No audible signal. And let's try speeding up the process. have arrived at the leg signal which is a Pritchard Drive, Parkdale Road and Tate Crescent. I will not be coughing here just because I've been doing too many crossings. Oh this one is kind of like the similar ones like the one we've seen over there. So again Wait. Good. So we observe that there is no audible instructions. Again, countdown time is too long. Sixteen sec. Actually, at twenty-one seconds. I don't know what you think, but long countdown time actually gives me some anxiety. Like, it's, it's kind of like a rush in your head telling you to like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up.
how we come across an inaccessible crosswalk right here. There's a missing her cut. I feel like bringing the bike is not inherently the worst thing since I can also spot inaccessible crosswalk feature. We are now at another arterial junctions of 8th Street, uh, West East Arterial and McCurger Drive. It's going to be very interesting to see because this is basically where a Strode meets another Strode. Slip lane already made it inaccessible to cross. It's also pretty unpleasant. So there's only one button here. I assume that it's for crossing 8th Street, but we're already having a flashing red. So we gotta. This one is also very different. I close this. Let's see. So, nope. Um, if you want to cross McCurcher to go to 8th Street, there's no audible signal. Let's see if this one has it. Minus the lack of curb cuts here, then this is. This might be. So, there's. Um, sorry. There's already a non existence of the curb cut which makes it already inaccessible. Let's see if, the, if there's an audible signal to recover some of the accessibility points. So, okay, none as well, which means this is a totally inaccessible junction. Oh yeah, like this whole junction here does not have any proof cuts. Oh, I don't like it. So we're coming towards a back button between McCurcher Drive and Edinburgh Place. This back button is newly installed due to the complaints from nearby residents trying to go to the malls and stores on my left. There are several supermarkets and stuff here. There are some residential homes. So, but because the junction is too close to 8th Street, it's too close to another existing junction with a the light, they decide to install just a back button like this. So when you press it, it flash yellow lights so it's like this. So it's basically not a stoplight to say that push button to turn on warning lights. 
So let's see. Okay. So there's an audible instruction saying that yellow light flashing, but that was it. No chirping sounds. And there are some flashing yellows here as well, indicating that it's flashing. So that means you can't cross. And based on traffic laws here, if you don't press that button to cross the street and if there's anything happen to you, it's your fault. Hey, let's try speeding up the process again. up the process like this meaning that I don't want you to have to like watch this video for too long but also for me to reduce the storage on my memory card and also to increase the smoothness of the footage The next junction is already appearing in front of our eyes. That is McCurcher Drive and Mount Allison Crescent. This one is also just a hawk signal for pedestrian. It's not a regular traffic signal. It's purely for purely for uh, pedestrians to go into the park on our right. Let's see how accessible it is. So first off, it's very, it's already inaccessible. You see here, this is where the light comes and it doesn't line up with the curb cut. So it's already some points docked for accessibility, but this one also doesn't seem to have a speaker. So I'm not sure if the audible signal even work, but okay, it's green, but nothing comes up. So not accessible. more junctions from here that has a light and that'll be the end of our walking tour. I want to speed up the process again but first I'm on the sidewalk. Second, I'm on the opposite direction of traffic. So it feels illegal to do so.
moving towards the next junction. Which is McCurcher and Boychuck. It's a three-way junction. So As you can see, it's currently green light for vehicles. Oh, never mind. It's green for those going to McCurcher now. I cannot hear anything. Again, there's this button right here. Press and hold. Actually, to minimize the crossing, I'm just gonna Press the button on this side then. I hope that I can beat the light. Press and hold, press and hold. Okay, green light and no audible signal. I think the rule of thumb is that like when you approach a junction you cannot hear any sound. You can safely assume that it has no audible signal unless, uh, unless there's a hidden speaker somewhere. So, speed up the process again. This time is Quite a walking distance to the next light, but this light is also a newly installed one. So I hope that we can end this walking tour with a functional uh, um, audible signal. Oh, interesting. Cyclists yield to cars. Cross this bridge here. Watch out for that broken cement. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Messed on the pathway. Fun fact, this is also a new sidewalk. It used to be now. Oh, so the light turns green for trucks but not for pedestrians, so 
I gotta wait for another circle of light. It's gonna be a long wait. But I heard the wait sound that it makes. When I press the button, that means this light has audible signal. Let's hear the chirp for one last time. Yep, there's the chirp. So this one definitely has audible signal, but like the very first junction we were on, uh, it's totally manual. If you want to cross it, you have to press the button. And that is the end of Makurcho Drive. This is where 105th Street begins. Makurcho Drive ends right here. And before I end the video, I also want to surprise you with something. So I've already explained that these buttons here, it's not push button. It's actually press and hold the button. Uh, so you hold it like that. And aside from the chirping sound, there's another thing that I feel like it's really good to address. However, we need to wait for the light to turn green first. So the light has turned green, and if you hover your hands or fingers over here, it actually vibrates, so it can tell you that you're good to go. So. If you touch this and you s can feel the vibration, that means you're good Wait. to go. Right, that's the end of my video. Thanks for watching.